Blue Green Algae, there are some visual things there, but for me, 100%, I can smell it about two weeks before you'll ever see it in an aquarium. It has a very, very distinct smell. Anyone that's had a big blue green algae outbreak in their aquarium, you go, yeah, that, that's not normal. Like, what is that smell? Yep, okay. And you'll forever remember that smell. And then the, the key is, once you've had that happen, again, managing hundreds of tanks over 10 years, you'll start to notice, hey, that one time when I smelled that again, like two weeks later, it got the algae. And then once I learned that once, I was able to repeat that always, right? So that smell, once you learn it, and you could learn this from another aquarist, you could learn it a story, you could be that weirdo of like, hey, there's blue green algae in there. Oh, that's what it smells like, right? You could learn that, and then you know if you ever smell that smell going forward, you know that you could kind of nip it in the bud and maybe treat it. So blue green algae is actually a bacteria, and it has a smell to it. And it could be black or blue or green, and it kind of coats things. Think of it like you took some bubble gum and you stretched it out a bunch, and then you just put that like over a plant and some gravel and some rock, right? It kind of is like this webby stuff. That's kind of how it grows. At the very beginning, it just looks like a little bit of green algae, but then it eventually coats stuff, gets pretty thick. You can even see it kind of purling sometimes with getting some bubbles on it. Uh, if it let it go for a long time, and it typically will suffocate out plants just by uh, denying them photosynthesis, and it does like to collect light. So one of the methods to help fight it off is to turn off lighting. That being said, that also is detrimental to plants, and it could cause uh, spats between fish and that kind of stuff. The best method to treat it, I've found, is erythromycin, which is an antibiotic, and yeah, that's that's kind of where I go to treat it, but I notice it's it's developing in the 800 gallon right now. Now, I never smelt it because I don't smell my 800 gallon aquarium. It's too high, I can't get up there and put my nose under the thing, and I don't get underneath very often and smell the sump. So I didn't smell it coming on, but I was able to identify it yesterday, and it's because my gravel, or not my gravel, but my like very coarse sand or very fine gravel, um, it's got a layer of like brown diatom algae growing on it. And I was like, you know, that's a sign that this isn't going to be healthy long term. And what do I mean by that? So by viewing that algae on the top, I started thinking about, well, what happened? I took out all these clown loaches. I took out the giraffe catfish, all the things that were hunting through the gravel and turning it all the time, took all those out. So now we've got this stagnant layer of gravel going on, which is collecting some debris. It's always getting light. It's never getting turned, right? So the, the gravel that's up here never is at the bottom. Always getting the same amount of light. So we need to get some, probably some, um, something in there to turn that substrate. But I also know that now that blue-green algae has developed, we need to combat that. So I might end up using a little bit of erythromycin. It's right on that edge right now. So if I get something in there that will kind of dig it up, I might be able to thwart it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to hit it with a round of erythromycin, and that will get it. And I treat that. I basically put in one dose, and I'll let that sit for an entire week. And it's not a very strong bacteria, or at least I find that erythromycin is very, 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 very effective against it. And so getting it early, much easier. If you wait till it's like really layered up and thick, it might take a few treatments to... Um, to get a hold of that so but yes those visual signs are one of the best ways so even though there's no test kit that exists to test am i gonna get blue green algae there's a smell associated with it there's a look associated with it and you can kind of see it coming on and some of the ways to help prevent it even though we don't know exactly what causes it lots of money is being spent a lot of scientists working on it we still don't know there's theories They've been proven, they've been disproven, but uh, improving uh, general aquarium conditions. And what I mean by that is, you know, just doing maintenance, making sure filters are relatively clean, making sure uh, we've got good flow in the aquarium. In this aquarium, it happens to be um, that it's going to be some fish digging around. That's going to help stir that sand bed up and things like that. Someone asked if there's a common name for that medicine. So the scientific name, erythromycin, 
two companies currently produce it that I'm aware of that us as hobbyists can buy. That would be API, which they make it as API erythromycin, and Fritz. Fritz makes it, and they call it Maricin. And uh, currently, I recommend buying the Maricin because it is a slightly better deal than the API erythromycin. So same active ingredient, but one you're saving a little bit of money on. So that's, that's my advice there.